Welcome back to the Children's Corner. We really hope that you are enjoying spending some time each day with us as we sing and we play and we draw and we have special guests like live chicken. So today we usually start with the sign of the cross in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today we're going to add to it and, it, and the prayer is like this. The Father is my hope. The Son is my refuge. The Holy Spirit is my protector. All Holy Trinity, glory to you. Okay? So what is it? The Father is my hope. Can you say that? The Father is my... Look at me. The Father... Yes, you can say, just say hope. The Father is my... No, you don't know hope. You have no hope. <laughs> we hope that you've been enjoying spending a little bit of time with us each day as we flex our creativity muscles and listen to fun stories. Please remember in your busy, fun-filled days to pray for those who are homebound without someone to pass the time with and also for those who are on the front lines, um, either through the delivery people or in the hospitals, and also for the world leaders to make wise decisions on how best to keep everyone safe. And I have to share with us today one of my very, very favorite stories. And I can tell you, this book was so cheeky. Yeah, we will show those ones in a minute, too. This book was so cheeky that it ran away about four times today. Every time we, we said, let's find that book and let's read it, it was nowhere to be found. It was even hidden in our bird guide book because all the birds wanted to go and play with their friends. So this is called The Ravens of Farn, and it's about St. Cuthbert. St. Cuthbert, the raisins. <laughs> <laughs> the raisins of farm. I have more questions. Okay. <laughs> the man of God Cuthbert came to live on the island of Farn alone. All alone with God, he meant to stay. Just Cuthbert, God, and the birds of Farn. On the, oh, the birds that fed and nested on farn, puffins and fulmers, terns and gulls, cormorants and eider ducks, linnets and pipits, warblers and sparrows, and a tribe of cheeky ravens. The birds built nests to hold their eggs, and the monk built a place to hold his prayers. Across the deep water sailed Cuthbert's friends, the monks of Lindisfarne, to help him build his home. From earth and stone they built his house, a chapel to pray in by night and day, a house where he could sleep and eat, a garden patch, a freshwater well, and around it all a tall, tall wall. Back sailed the monks to Lindisfarne. Safe from the wind inside the wall, he planted his grain, drank from his well, and slept and ate and prayed. Inside the wall, heaven was all the man of God could see, stars at night and sun by day. And the birds that flew overhead. Then one day, oh what a surprise, as Cuthbert picked his grain, down flew a flock of linnet, linnets and pipits, warblers and sparrows, and the bold and greedy ravens. The man of God cried out to them, Ho! How dare you eat grain you did not grow? That sounds like the little red hen, doesn't it? If God himself has said to you, you may, I will give you leave to eat. But if not, stop taking what is yours and be off. And away they all flew, linnets and pipits, warblers and sparrows, and last of all, the ravens. Do you know which one is the ravens, David? No. The black ones, yeah, the black ones. One day in winter, Cuthbert's friends came to visit Farn again. When they towed their boats ashore, their feet were chilled by the freezing waves. Crowded into Cuthbert's hut, the monks took off their soggy shoes, crusted with salt from the sea. With warm water, the man of God thawed their tingling toes. What we need, Cuthbert said, is a bigger house for guests. The monks of Linda's Farn agreed and planned to help him build. When next they came, they brought their tools and timbers and roofing straw. Hmm, I wonder if they could help um, old grandmother farthing with the roofing straw. Soon they had built a house near the shore outside Cuthbert's wall. But as the monks admired their work, down came the ravens crying, cawing and crowing to raid the roof and snatch off the straw. What's our roof made of? Is it made out of straw? No, it's made of, out of wood. It's made out of wood. And shingles. And shingles, right. 
Let that alone, the man of God said, but the ravens only mocked him. So Cuthbert shouted, Away with you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Then bowing their heads in guilt and shame, the ravens took to flight. Three days later, while the man of God weeded his garden rows, one of the ravens returned. Beak in the dust, he bowed down low, with feathers all outspread. Well, said Cuthbert, are you sorry then? If it is true, you and your friends have leave to come back again. So the bird flew off. Then back to Cuthbert's garden, all the ravens flocked. A gift they brought, a lump of lard, and set it at his feet. Cuthbert cried, how humble you are, if only human folk would learn to wash away their pride like this with prayers and tears and gifts. When next the monks were Cuthbert's guests, he brought out the raven's gift. He helped them to rub the lard on their shoes. Do you know what lard is? It's like a hard oil. Now this will keep the leather dry whenever you launch your boats. Because do oil and water mix? No. No. So if you, if you oil down your shoes very, very well, it will keep the water out. For many years after, the ravens lived on Cuthbert's island of Farn, no longer stealing from him or his guests, they made their nests from island grass and ate food they found for themselves. So this says, St. Cuthbert lived in the north of England in the 7th century AD. He loved all of God's creatures. In the life of St. Cuthbert, Bede tells us the story of the ravens, as well as stories about the saint and other animals, such as horses, eagles, and sea otters. Okay, so we're going to do a robin today. And first we make little shape like a smile and then say boop 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 and then say that maybe make that a little four robin in the rain what a saucy fellow robin in the rain mind your socks of yellow Running in the garden on your nimble feet. Digging for a dinner with your long, strong beak. Robin in the rain, you don't mind the weather. Showers always make you gay. But the winds are wishing you would stay at home. Robin on a rainy day. This is the way we scratch for worms. How would a bird scratch for worms? Scratch for worms. This is the way we scratch for worms so early in the morning. This is the way we peck our food, peck our food, peck our food. This is the way we peck our food so early in the morning. Double, double, double this, this, this. Double, double, double that, that, that. This, this, that, that. Cat in a fat hat. Double, double, double this, this, that, that. Since our theme for this week is birds, our challenge for you today is fort building. And just like birds have to go flying around and gather from the world around them material that would be useful to build their homes, with your parents' permission, always with your parents' permission, go and find, well, what are some good things to build forts with, David? Blocks. Blocks, if you're building a fort for a Lego man, definitely. Ella? But for real people. Sticks and, oh, that's a great idea. What else can we use? So how many sticks, if I, if I have two sticks, will it make a teepee? No, you need four. Four, okay. And then you whip them together. Mm-hmm, and is that an inside fort or an outside fort? Either one. Either one. Would it, do, what do you think, would it work better on a, on a hardwood floor? Or would it work better where you could actually dig the poles into the ground? Probably where you could dig the poles into the ground, but you could, if you had like cutting or something, you could put it on either hole or either. That's a good idea, but only, again, if your parents are okay with that. So what else can we use, David, to build a big fort? Not a Lego man fort, but a big fort. We could use hay. Hay, if you are a goat. Mm. What about what you're sitting on? Would that make a good fort? Yeah. Yeah. Would you need something else? So we have for you today a little craft. What we have been doing around here is keeping all of our cardboard because cardboard is a fantastic building material. And what do you think this is, David? Um, a banana. A banana? Looks kind of like a banana, yeah. doesn't it? Well, 
Well, well it's, it's upside down. Yeah. It's a bird shape. Yeah, it kind of is. Let's see if we can make it look a little less like a banana. And okay, like a bird. Yeah, you want to cut it out for me? Sure. But don't give it away. And then, David, can you do something for me? Mm -hmm. So I just have a, pe a rectangle of paper that I've cut out of, a, out of a paper bag. And David is going to pick a color, and he's going to color it. Very simple. Green. Green, all right. So color it green. You could pick the orange. Yeah. Can I, can I scribble? You can scribble, most certainly. I think I'm going to do mine purple. So this is a really great way. If you don't have construction paper, you can just use a paper bag. If you have construction paper, great. But very nice, Ella. Um, now, could you actually cut out a diamond? a diamond? Do you know yeah. how to cut out a diamond? Yeah. Could you cut out a diamond out of this piece of paper right here? Sure. Keep going. Thank I think you. I'll use a small one. So do you know how to do an accordion fold? Mm-hmm. Okay, so go ahead and do an accordion I fold. Know all that. Let's go to Can you give my birdie his eye wherever you want the bird the eye to be? Oh I broke off his Right there. Beautiful eye. So now we have our eye, and we're going to glue on our beak. You want to glue on the beak? Sure. And I am going. And one thing with making crafts together is the process is as enjoyable as a perfect finished project, sometimes even more so that you're working together. Yeah, very nice. So now, whoops, I'm starting to break this. Depending on what you use for the bird, if you use construction paper, you can also use painting paper. And you decide whether or not you want to paint it on both sides or if you only paint it on one side. Um, then you kind of have a decoration on the other side. It, and it reminds me sort of of an old style thing. So we have our bird. And then we have his tail. I'm just going to cut a little slit here for his tail. And that's his wings. And that's his wings. And there you have it. And what we also, what you can also do is you can make a variety of these birds of different colors. And obviously you can color them. You can color the, use different colors of paper, um, different sizes of birds. So I have a couple different sizes on my template here. And I have big ones, I have little ones. And then what you can also do is you can turn it into a mobile. Ella, do you want to put the two sticks together for the mobile, honey? We did this once with something else. This is a very common Done. way. Beautiful! You want to use that one for his tail instead? What? You want to use this one for his tail instead? Can I glue? Let me glue it. Okay, just put a little dot of glue right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let it go. Beautiful. Can I put the notebook? Pull on this one. Okay. So you can put birds on each one corner. Thing off one of mine. Okay. And you could attach that to something and spin it so mm. the birds go spinning around. Early the next morning, <laughs> Stubborn put on his very best clothes and set off for the palace. This was the first time he would be talking to the queen privately. Have you ever gone to talk to a queen privately? What do you think? Mm, yes, I'm familiar with guys and queens. This is true. This is very true. Though it wasn't the first time he would be going to the palace. Twice a year, all the citizens of Iville pass by the palace and salute the queen. They do this at the start of the new year and also on her birthday when they are celebrating and feasting. Nobody is allowed to disturb her at any other time of the year except to discuss a serious problem. Stubborn had to wait with several others in a waiting room <coughs> until his name was called. He looked around and saw huge carved columns towering toward the ceiling. The ceiling was painted in different shades of blue, which made it look like the sky. 
The floor was made of gleaming marble, and the seats were covered with red velvet. Even though only a few people were waiting, everyone sat in silence. The only thing that could be heard was the booming voice of the sentry as he called out the names, Stubborn, son of arrogance, subject of Ivil. Present, responded Stubborn. Follow me. Stubborn followed him down a long hallway. In front of every door there was a guard. Finally they reached the throne room and the chambers of the queen. At the entrance were two guards, standing silent and motionless like statues. The sentry who accompanied him motioned for him to go on alone. Stubborn's heart sounded pounding quickly. As soon as he stepped inside, he stood up straight and started proudly walking toward her as if he were in a procession. Queen Conceit looked at him from high above, seated on her golden throne. On her head, she was wearing a diamond crown. Her hair draped down around her shoulders. Her glittering red clothes were decorated with gold thread. Her secretary stood next to the throne. Stubborn knew that it was exactly 30 steps from the door of the chamber to the throne. He had rehearsed the greeting ceremony with his mother many times the night before. And so he went up to the queen and made two deep bows, one to honor her power and the other to honor her beauty. It was a good thing that Queen Conceit, Conceit's lips formed a faint smile then because Stubborn almost thought that she wasn't real. Now that he saw her up close, he noticed that her nose was turned up just a little more than the average nose in Iville. So you were stubborn and you wished to travel to find you, Bill. She held her chin up high, her eyes half closed. You do realize, don't you, that there is nowhere as magnificent and beautiful as I, Bill. I do, your majesty, but I want to become the discoverer of you, Bill. I admire you. You are certainly brave. If only all my subjects were like this, I would, of course, give you my consent, if such a visit were worth it. I would even hold a joyous feast on your return. Unfortunately, though, Uville is the most insignificant place in the world, and its citizens are not worth bothering over. I heard that some people from Uville passed through here recently, and that you met them. Yes, Your Majesty. They dared to come all the way here, and they didn't even pay their respects to the Queen. It makes me disgusted and outraged. I want to save you from such great and useless trouble. However, she continued, if you insist, I will let you go. In that case, be careful. Don't let anyone tell you what to do. Wherever you go and whomever you are with, always say to yourself, me first, me first. What do you think? Is that a nice thing to say? No. Those two little words are magical. They will help you overcome any difficulties and you will always come out ahead. Have I made myself clear? Yes, your highness. Let me hear you say the words. Stubborn stood straight upright and yelled out, me first, me first. Louder, child, louder. You must feel what you are saying. Me first, me first. That's right, very good. Now you may go. Thank you, your highness. My family sends you their regards. Send them my regards in return. And with a wave of her hand, she mentioned for him, motioned for him to leave. Stubborn made two bows and left. So Stubborn is going on his way, and we will leave him to his journey for the day. And we will end with our prayer from St. Patrick. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me. Have a blessed rest of your day.